the Bible communicates both in the Old and New Testament that the church is a kingdom, which is a constitutional empire, which is the elect and the very elect, the called out ones, which includes all those people who were saved in the Old Testament and all those people who are saved in the New Testament from beginning to end. And this includes both Gentiles, those when Gentiles accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, they are no longer Gentiles, but they become member or become members of God's church, become Israel, God's elect, the called out ones, which includes the very elect and the very elect. Since God's empire, his kingdom, the constitutional empire, his kingdom, the church, is spiritual and eternal, it does not conflict with temporal governments and empires. It is not in conflict or in consistent with it. But you need to get away from thinking that the church is somehow some small group of people in a building, or that the building is the church, but the church is universal, it's worldwide. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior is God's elect to call out ones and belong to God's empire, his constitutional empire. And Jesus is king, Jesus is emperor, king of kings, and all, gov all authorities and governments should, should submit and will Submit to the will and purpose of God. Submit to His moral and civil law. So, number one, the church is divinely ordained institution to its hereditary rights is indis indefensible. Three, the church are accountable to God alone. Number four, non-resistance and passive obedience are enjoined by God. And so therefore, since the church is sovereign, and the scriptures communicate that, preachers can ordain and grant people titles of nobility such as Archduke, Grand Duke, uh, Marcus, Count, Vice Count, Knight, uh, Baron, Baronet, etc. It is the right it is the divine right of the church to be able to do so. And the divine right of kings is ordained by God and Jesus Christ fulfilled that 
position by becoming emperor of the kingdom of heaven and king of the kingdom of God for all eternity. You sat the right hand of God and began and sat on the throne of David and began his mediatorial reign in the first century. And the millennium is the period between Christ's ascension and return. And we are in the millennium. And there's countless, countless, I can count, countlessly, countlessly defend these principles and teachings and have in more in-depth studies concerning several of these issues that I have communicated in this message. Take a look at Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but evil. Do you want to be unafraid of authority? Do what is good and you will be praised from the same, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject not only because of that, but also for conscience sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers continually to very do. And this not only includes you know, your Safety of the government, but it also includes the church. And some people, because as the Old Testament clearly communicates, there is a civil, the civil aspect of God's kingdom, and there is ecclesiastical aspect that work in harmony with one another. Turn to First Peter chapter two. Thirteen through sixteen. Therefore submit yourself to every ordinances of man for the Lord's sake. Whether to the king as supreme. Now this, when it says king here, it refers to Jesus Christ. And this word weather in the Greek is if to, or to governors, as those who are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of those who do good. So, Jesus Christ the king Authorities, or Jesus the King, sent it for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good you may put silent the ignorant, foolish men as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for advice. But as bond servants of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the King. This is referring to Jesus Christ. This includes this passage includes secular and 
the church. Secret governors and the church. And First Corinthians chapter twelve is a great example how the church works together to fulfill God's will and purpose in life. Every part of the body serving its purpose. 